Hello and welcome to Trainsome TV. In today's video, we're doing something that I've been looking forward to doing for quite some time now, and it is the Nidatal Barn Bad Available to Stockheim route. Um, we're going to do this in two parts. We're going to do half the route in one video and half the route in the other because I think doing only one hit and then getting out and looking at places, I think we're going to end up rushing things more than we would in a shorter video. Um, and I, I think it deserves two two videos more than one to be perfectly honest so what we're going to do we're going to actually start in the middle of the route and we're going to head back down to bad vilbel so um we're starting at heldenbergen um windekun and then we're going to go to bad vilbel so we're going to start this one and we are running on the little dmu unit that comes with the route uh, so we'll go through all the bits and pieces that uh, we need to do on this run so we're going to get started and let it load in really really looking forward to doing this it's uh it's been one of on my radar for a long time since it was announced and before because obviously i'm in in, in the beta anyway but no it's been, it's great to finally be able to do this so exciting times exciting times so uh it's about a 30 minute run but it might be it'll be a little bit longer by the time we've done what we need to do so we're driving the dvbr 628.2 uh diesel multi uh, multiple unit here uh, it's got a weight of 72.2 tonnes, it's two cars in length, and it's 44.5 metres all together. Let's get started. So, oh. just going to get ourselves set up. So, first of all, we need to put the brake key in. I could be doing this totally wrong, but this is the way I, I've been sort of like using the train and it's always worked for me so I feel like I'm doing something okay let's put all the lights on right, that's everything there uh, power needs to be on of course some doors open on the right leave it the mirrors on automatic they do actually open and close themselves Right, I think that is everything we need for this. Heldenbergen, Windeken. So this being halfway along the route, um, obviously you join the main line. So obviously you get passing services that come through here. Um, if you've got Link and Rheinstrecker, you will have services laid into these, so you will actually see more services pass by at the um, the main stations along the route. So just bear that in mind that you will see more traffic passing through. Um, you can't drive the other trains on it, but you will at least get to see some bits and pieces flying by, which is cool. Really, really nice vibe to this route. Really nice feel to it. Obviously, um, older period. It's got the lovely mint livery on the unit there. And another one again it's great to see some retro stuff still coming through for the game it's got the old sort of like dot matrixy sort of like flicky i think not, not, i think the ones that flicker like looking as they uh, roll through i think but uh, i don't know the actual technical name for them but it's cool now we need to get some lights on we will be going in a second There we go. So we are good to go. So we release those brakes. And hopefully, we will have power. And there we go, we're off. So I'm not going to talk like all technical like I know what I'm doing with this uh, because I, I don't understand fully German railways. Um, but I will, of course, just take in the atmosphere. We're just going to have a look around, take a drive and just show it off really because it, it deserves to be shown off. It's a lovely, lovely route. 
and everybody that's been involved with this, um, and there's quite a few people that's been involved with it, um, they've all done a sterling effort to get this um, to release. Um, it's been a, it's one of them projects that's been going on for quite a while as well. It's, uh, it's been great to see it come to uh, come to the end. So well done to them for uh, getting it there. Some really nice bits and pieces with like, custom assets and bridges and stuff like that. Really nice lush foliage. Well, as you can see, it's it's stunning. There's loads of new trees and bits and pieces with this. It's not just your usual stuff that you'd see, which is nice. Fields full of crops as well. It's when you start going into the actual countryside of it all, you there's so much to see. We've got our first station point, which is Windecken uh, Kiahanu. I don't. I, I will absolutely kill the pronunciations of these because I don't fully know how to pronounce them. I don't know what KR means. Um, fortunately, I know people will be shouting at the screens, and if you do know, pop yourselves into the comments and just let me know. Just even just how to pronounce them because I'm all happy for learning. It's a very uh, basic station is this one. There's not much to see on this one. Just a halt, if anything. So, route map itself. So, we're focusing on where the line is in the middle. We're going down, basically, to this other line down here. So, we've got a nice little section, which is a bit of... Twisty, turdy, windy through the countryside as well. Um, like I said, we'll come back and do the other half very, very soon. We'll have another video shortly after following. Quick look. So the sort of things you can expect to see is the um, really cool little sort of street scenes and stuff like that um, around the town areas. Some shops or something here, like some a, a dining area about what's a bit there. It's, it's really, really neatly done. I, I love this sort of detail. I think there's a bit of a collision boundary thing going on over there. That's why it's sort of popping up into the air. Nothing sinister. That is. No idea what that is. <laughs> so not much here, just a, a sign and a clock on this station. One thing... I'll just get this on with the sound is the the sounds are very very hard to hear until you get quite close to you as you can hear not a problem when you're in the train as such but uh, when you're outside and you, you sort of wait for it to arrive you, you don't hear it right away till it's sort of like on you. So it'd be nice if um, down the line there's an update that we could see some updates to the sounds and just how that sort of like the curve on them is on the uh, on the, the fade in the distance how they come in. But in the train you can hear them perfectly well and they sound decent. I mean I don't know what a six to eight sounds like in real life. I've never seen one but it sounds nice and I like it. Lots of jointed track on this line as well. So yeah, the mirrors fold in and out. I think you can actually find the button. Where is it? There we go. I'll leave them automatic so they open and shut when we get to a station. 
So, it comes with Cifra and uh, I think PZB and all that lot in here. I haven't got it activated because I am useless with uh, PZB and Cifra will just do my heading while I'm doing a video because I'll be in and out and if I miss it, it'll just stop the train. So, when I come to do the stream, we'll have it on. Um, but for the video purposing on this, I've just left it off. Just so We're not stopping and starting all the time in the middle of nowhere. So, we're taking views like this, you see, these nice bridges. Lots of girder bridges. He's doing that with the boundary. Annoying. <laughs> so the other thing with this route is it's associated with sugar beet and uh, that. And there is some freight workings that you can actually do for that. Um, there's a little diesel shunter it comes with. But it's not a new one. It's one that's been out before. But um, I'll go through it in a bit and I'll go through the manual. That is, I believe... Think is a sort of like distant signal thing because there's some there is semaphores in this route, so I think we actually have one coming up now. Yeah, so it's a distant semaphore, basically. That semaphores, by the way, on this route are absolutely stunning. Now we're going to go up and actually watch this because they're really, really good, really nice signals. They've got animations and they've got sounds and everything, um, so we're just gonna. watch that as it goes by also the power lines are actually moving the wind which is really cool just the wobble and stuff on them so nice yeah the, the, the power lines moving it sort of this route sort of reminds me of um oh, what's the guy name the guy's name who used to do chess classic routes um sad he used to do all that sort of stuff, all the fancy bits and pieces, all the bits that moved and stuff like that. And they always stood out in terms of like just amazing detail and stuff like that. And this sort of gives me that vibe uh, for bits and pieces like that. <clears throat> uh, another thing that's really cool is there is a chance that you could get a, a level crossing that hasn't activated. Um, and then you can find them by noticing if there's a light on the approach to, uh, to the level crossing that hasn't lit up white. If that's not little, then you'd have to jump off the train and actually activate it. It's on a low probability that it'll happen, so you won't get it every single drive. You've got to be very lucky to hopefully have that happen. And myself, yeah, I haven't had that happen, so and I've driven this a few times and I haven't I haven't noticed it yet, so I'm not lucky enough. <laughs> I'm over shooting a bit here. I've gone a bit far. Should be alright. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Probably gone to sort of where a four car unit goes, but there is some four car services on this. Wagon for the uh, sugar beat there. I've had to make everybody walk down to the train. I do apologise, people. But this is Buddha time. Oh, Bess. Very nice. Really, really cool station buildings. I can't begin to think of how hard it was to research some of this. I mean, some of these might not even... I don't know if it if look like this today. Maybe a lot of it still does look like this, but I can imagine a lot of it probably doesn't. Um, if you do get uh, another person that hasn't activated and you do find that, um, you would have to come and activate this. I can actually do this to just show you. So if I actually press that, it should go down. There you go. So I've activated that level crossing. But there's a probability that if you go over the, the marker or like the track link part and it size it doesn't want to activate then you'd have to come out and press that press that again i might be lucky to get it happen to me in a bit who knows the other ones for the other side there you don't have to traipse over the level crossing now i'm wondering i want to go and have a look at this here because i feel like that might be a collectible <clears throat> i'm gonna have a look I do love these old sort of, uh, I don't know how to really, a piece of wood with some banking at the back of it. I think it's just a so, so low budget station, not in terms of how they created it, by the way, in real life. Low budget platforms. There's got to be some collectibles on here, surely. I don't know what this is. It's not a collectible. There that is. There you are. Poster. Cool. 
Stockheimer Bannerfest. It's a theme festival, something by the looks of it. Post box. Trains in post. <laughs> Excuse me. Still got a bit of the old cough. It's not uh, quite left me just yet. Looking, I know there is a collectible in the form of milk bottles. If you see a milk bottle, it is a collectible. And they're really, really funny. I just love the way that they've been done. Definitely a nod to Trainsing Classics milk bottle. <laughs> Basically, when you have a missing asset, it changes. It actually, that milk bottle changes into a form of an asset. But they're not all the same assets on the platform. I've actually seen a couple of different things so far, so. One to look out for. I'll just quickly have a look through the train, Spallery. It's got that very 90s vibe about it, hasn't it, with the colours and stuff like that. Now, when you change end on these, I believe you have to go to a little compartment to change something. I'm trying to find where it is. I haven't actually done it myself yet. I don't know where it is. There, I think. Is it? Nope. It sounds there's a compartment somewhere on the train that you actually uh, lift the hatch up and change something. Could be on this end. Maybe not. But it's there. So going in here, you can see there's a. It's all to C for and P to B. What is it changing ends? But it is uh, C for and P to B. So you go in there and that's how you turn it on basically. Cool. A little second man seat if you wish to go and have a sit down in there. That's a nice view. Right, moving on. We must move on, because otherwise we'll never move on. So set in nineteen ninety two, the Nidatal Barn Route expansion. Fort Grayson Wolf 3 takes you through the state of Hessen in the newly reunified Federal Republic of Germany on one of the numerous rural lines of the country between Bad Bilbao and Stockheim. The line is an important lifeline connecting local settlements and farmlands of the main lines. Uh, with most of the DBBR 628 shoes on the route, um, operating all the way until Frankfurt Hapenhof, uh, which is the main station, uh, local sugar beet freight services historically delivered the local production of, uh, to Bad Bilbo to be later collected and processed by the Friedberg Sugar Factory back in 1992. The railways were operating by the public company of Deutsche Bundesbahn, which is the German Federal Railways, and were um, boasting different liveries based on their type of service. In this route, you will see passenger services using the mint livery representing local and regional services. So, e facts, track mileage is 31 kilometers, which equates to 16 miles. It doesn't actually look 16 miles when you look at the map, but that is what it is. Um, comes with 14 stations, including um, six stations where two trains can pass each other, so there's passing loops as well. Um, max line speed is 60 kilometers an hour, and your services, there is 62 um, in the timetable. Which operates um, 54 DBBR 628s and 8 DBBR 365s. I don't know what the difference is between that though. <laughs> Presume that is in real life, so we haven't got a 365. Uh, but altogether, there are 62 services up. This unit does all that, so we may see another train down the line. Who knows? That'd be cool. Um, the train that comes with the route is the DBBR 628, which is this little beauty. It's got a little charm to it, I think. I, I like this sort of stuff. Give me anything like this over a high-speed electrical train any day of the week. I, I love this sort of stuff. Rural, rural running. Just look at the view. How nice does that look? I think this is the thing this route does as well. It brings something different to Train's World in a different way of doing things. And it just shows what the game can do. Um, have having given that you have more time to obviously 
sit down and do things. I mean, obviously you can't, in the more commercial sense of how these do do things, they've got it's got to be done to a time scale. At the end of the day, um, you can't spend years and years doing these things. Where obviously, the team had a lot more time to do this in their. They've done this in the spare time, basically, alongside the day job. So they'll do the day job and then they've come and worked on this um, in their evenings, basically. So fair play to them, and it's paid off. But yeah, you can obviously you can see that you've got more time. You can you can invest more time into the, um, the detail and the foliage and all the gubbins and bits and pieces like that. And it really, really does pay off. So we've got the, um, the little white light there telling us that we can proceed. This is Killian Stockton, I think. I'm just going to give it a go and pronounce it. If it's wrong, do tell me off. Oh, Dorfolden is our next one. I just love the enclosed feel of it all. Now, I'm not sure if you'll notice this, but when you go over these bridges, when you come to drive the route, look, when you're going over the bridges, if you just keep your eye on the train, you'll see it actually bobs and it goes over a bridge. If you watch the train now, It's hard to notice it, but it bobs like it's going over a trap joint. <laughs> really, really cool. So we've got level crossing activated, as you can see there. So you need to make sure that them signs are obviously flashing white. Because if they're not, then you can't really proceed over them without the uh, barriers down, of course. But there's always the odd chance that it may not be working. That's a non-barriered crossing as well. Presuming all it's all level crossings that have that uh, feature, uh, you'd have to jump out, even if it's barriered or non. If you can still turn the lights on. Yeah, I can see the little uh, boxes at these crossings. So, presuming. Uh, that it's at all of them. Open door folding. Coming in here a bit slow, but rather than flying through the station and overshooting it, I'd rather get it right and at least not miss it. <laughs> now, 
Now these, uh, this does do the doors. Look the right side. Aha! It does work. It does work. In the milk bottles, well, I don't think they're actually all stations. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> That's based. So, activating that sends like a thunderstorm. <laughs> it's like a statue. What is it? That's ace. You have to look after statues as well. Statues, maps, and milk bottles are the ones I've seen so far. Not maps, but posts. You can make me some maps as well. That's nice jumping train. So the DBBR628 was manufactured between 1974 and 1995 across five subclasses by several historical manufacturers, with most of them having merged with one larger manufacturers, um, one of the larger manufacturers nowadays. Um, with a total of 479 of these units produced, whilst being a diesel multiple unit with strictly identical cabs at either end, being able to operate coupled with similar, uni uh, similar units. 6 to 8 is in reality a more it's more akin to push pull train uh, I'm gonna get that right again uh, so the 6 to 8 in reality is more akin to push pull train in function having the 6 to 8 car being the motor car with the diesel engines the 9 to 8 being the cab control car the 6 to 8 was designed for mainline and most primarily local railway operations with it being a staple of local rural lines feeding into the larger regional hub and main lines. With a top speed of 120 km an hour, 75 mile an hour. Um, in this route within Trainsaw World 3, you can operate the DBBR 628.2 on the entirety of the line between Val Bilbo and Stockheim. Among all stations, with some of those services continuing off to Frankfurt after stepping out of Val Bilbo. Uh, the manual then goes on to talk about how to drive the train. We're not. I'm not going to go through all that with you. That is something that you definitely need to go and have a read upon. I thought there was a train coming towards me then. <laughs> that was a worrying uh, thought. I was waiting at the station. It just looked like it was on my bit of track then. I thought, oh dear. He's at the red. Because I'm late, basically. That's run as a four car set. Right, so we are back on the station that we just literally left. So we're just going to wait for the trains to arrive. For, there'll be a little like a minute. So we'll wait and we'll have a little look round. And hopefully, all will be working once more. Just have a little look round. Lovely trees. So yeah, going through the collectibles, um, milk bottles, which have a special effect when collected, um, sign posters, 
statues and crossing sounds to fix. And be on the other side as well. Like our trains here. Um, yeah, so along with the diesel that, that comes with you, you get some wagons, um, which are the ZG2s. Um, you can do some bits with them as well. Um, so it says on here that the signals at end of the freight trains can be changed. The current one is also used back in 1992 for the ZG2. Oh, hang on. It is equipped by default. This can be changed to the ZG102 by walking and equip it. Right, so you can change the different signs. And what are the wagons actually called? It's not actually, I don't think, well, unless I've been blind, I don't think it actually tells you. Oh, yeah, our signal's changed now. So I must have just made it all very late. Technically, you wouldn't be this late. So. Just me, basically. Right, we are all right now. We are on time. <laughs> basically, don't be late. All things can happen. I'm just trying to see what the wagon's called. So I've totally missed what it is. Doesn't quite say unless I can uh, scout it out in this uh, little manual. I might have missed it to be fair. It just says in the trains about the um, the unit basically, but it doesn't say anything about the wagons. Steam saw will uh, hopefully have all that on there. Got literally like two and a bit minute. I'm um, just going through the credits on this. So, um, all the people that have been involved with this. Um, so, basically everything. Lucas, um, Klimizik. I hope I've said this right, by the way. And if I haven't, I do apologise, Lucas. <laughs> uh, Edward Fisk as well. You then got uh, scenery and 3D modelling from um, Trail Dog Runner 1909. Daniel Barnett as well. Loco and Wagon is Mike Goltz. Um, from TSG. You've also got Michael Fuchel and Eric Wagner. Timetable is Joe Burgess. And then some special thanks going out to Eds, Daisy, Dan Hashtag 2, Will Marshall, and the Beta team. And then the uh, manual authors, Lucas Klimizic and also Raphael Biez. I hope I've got them two names right. Do my best. I do do my best. Sometimes it's not enough, <laughs> but I do give it a go. No, yeah, it, is, it really is worth reading up on that manual. Just to get a, a little bit of a background history on the route. Uh, understanding the signalling. And anything else that you may not quite know. It's nice just to learn a bit of the backstory about the route as well. <clears throat> now, I think as well, I, I, I saw this on the DTG stream, I think... I started planning this route in 2000, 2020, I think it was. And then, <clears throat> obviously, 2023 now, so you can, you can imagine how long it's taken to get this to this far. In between the day-to-day -day job, of course, so. It's not something uh, that's taken five minutes to put together.
Right, we are good to go. <clears throat> the train itself is really easy to drive in general. So we've got Grono Hess Nasu and then Bad Vilbel Platform 2. It's got cornfields and stuff here. Little sugar beet and everything. Nice to see some crops in fields. If you're not obviously in the countryside, you're skirting around the backs of houses and through little villages. Um, it's all very sort of like they're all close to each other. The station it's very uh, enclosed in some areas. It's just a lovely little rural feel. All them pink trees, the blossom trees. If you see as well on the actual speedometer, um, it's slightly different. It actually tells you where you are on the... Um, where that yellow is at the minute. That was telling me we had a brake force on. We're now taking the brakes off. It's now going central. And we actually have a level crossing that's not working. Finally. Brilliant. As I say, right, we've got a level crossing that's not activated currently. That, I think. Soon find out. That's great. <laughs> I finally actually have one that's not uh, working. But yeah, the it's slightly changed. So when you put power on, the blue bar goes up and it'll go um, obviously yellow when you put brakes on. So crossing must just be off at the station. I don't know where the crossing is. Must be a little bit further out the bend. Mm. That hasn't activated, has it? But I don't see where. Unless this one activates when you get a bit closer. Oh, it's this one, isn't it? I put that on now. Should have the light flashing. Yeah, there we go. Really, in theory, we'll, what we will do is actually get out and do it. We'll keep things moving. Alright, it's time for a three kilometre sprint into Bad Vilbel.
I did put a little bit too much uh, power on there as we left that station, but never mind. You see the minute the blue bar is right, right at the top on that uh, speedometer. If I take the power off, it goes back down to the middle. Basically, there's nothing happening at the minute. Links in the description as well for this product, guys. So do go take a look at that. At the time of the video going out, um, as well, it will be it'll be out on the Xbox and PlayStation. It'll be out on PC a, a little bit later in the day. Um, so when, once it comes out on the PC, I'll put that link into the description as well. So just keep your eye on that. But if, if you are on the PlayStation or Xbox prior, then obviously it will be available first over there. Shame they can't go out simultaneously uh, over all three together at once, but. The way obviously that it is and how it works. Stubbs of old track here. Must be the remnants of an old yard or something. And we are now just showing up with the other part of the main line. Maybe we'll see another train pass by is a different thing, but we'll see. we might do. Who knows? Oh, there we go. <laughs> As if by magic. So that was the uh, the 110 there with the uh, cab car. I'm not sure if any of you ever stop at these stations, but uh, the ones I've seen so far just go through. That was good timing. It just gives you a bit of something else to see when you get to these big, bigger stations. So, this is where you saw before, but we was actually like, waiting for the shunt to come down. He's now waiting for us, so if we were late, he'll have been given the priority there. See, he's just waiting to go in. So it's the um, it's been seen before that unit. I'm not sure if it had a few modifications done to it though. Um, but uh, yep, it's there to use and play with. And there is some of the new wagons over there as well. <laughs> Oh. 
Get rid of the wagon quickly before we end up there. No, it's nice to have another wagon in there. No doubt. We'll see them somewhere one day. Be used. On another route. I don't even know what doors are on them. Nope. Nope. And there we are. Let's get this back into the uh, free run for a second. Just while we end. Yeah, so you can see, you can put those on as well. Can play with the bottom bits as well. Oh, just put stuff in them. No, I thought I put a load in it. No, they were already loaded. You can see the sugar beet in there. But no, there we go. This is bad, uh, bad available. That is the first part anyway. Um, we will come back and do the other part very, very soon. So it will be far after this, but we'll do the other half of the route. Um, just so you can have a look at that as well. But um, yeah, do check out the route out. It's very, very good. Really enjoyable. Uh, we'll be streaming it as well coming up very soon. So keep your eye out for that. And um, we'll do it properly. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and we'll uh, see you again very soon. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit your notification bell for future videos. Catch on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash trainsim underscore TV as well. Those are usually Fridays and Sundays, those streams, so just keep your eye out for them. Uh, do come along and join us. It was great to see new people joining. Uh, but otherwise, thank you very much. Take care, and again, bye for now.